Okay, so here's another problem that we're going to do where we have to list the sides and angles of the triangle in order from least measure to greatest measure. This is more of a difficult one, I, I would say, and you, you'll see why in a minute. Okay, so um, this time we are given the measures of the sides um, as x squared plus 8, negative 3x plus 7, and x plus 5. And we're also given the perimeter. So this part is, is pretty easy. You say, all right, well, if I know the perimeter and I know the, the length of the sides in terms of x, I can just add them all up and set it equal to 35, solve for x, get the, the measures of the sides, and then list them, and then list the angles. And that, that's exactly what you're going to do. Okay, so let's start off by saying, okay, so x squared plus 8 plus negative 3x plus 7 plus x plus 5 equals 35. Okay, so then you just combine like terms. So x squared is by itself. There are no other x squared terms. Then we've got a negative 3x and a, so we've got a negative 3x and a positive x, which will be negative 2x. And then we've got our constants, a positive 8, a positive 7, and a positive 5, which is going to add to uh, 8 plus 7 is 15 plus 5, 20. And then, of course, that equals 35. So now what you're probably saying to yourself is, oh, this looks familiar. This is a quadratic equation. So I could solve this, you know, using the quadratic formula. I could solve it by factoring. Lots of different ways you could solve it. But first, of course, we have to set it equal to 0. So let's do that first. Okay. So we end up with x squared plus, oops, it's not plus, minus 2x minus 15 equals 0. Okay, so I'm going to move this up slightly because I think we might be running out of room. Alrighty, okay. So now what we're going to do is you could use the quadratic formula. You know, there's lots of ways you can solve quadratic equations. But I personally think factoring a lot of the times uh, can be the easiest way. Actually, I'm going to move this over a little bit too. And you'll see why in a second. We'll, we'll be able to get back up there, so don't worry. Um, okay, so I think factoring is the easiest if it's possible. I just think it's the fastest. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so what we know is that because the coefficient um, of your x squared term here is 1, we know that this is just going to be x and x, okay? And then your linear term here is negative, and your constant's negative. So what that tells us is because your constant is negative, okay, that one of them must be plus and one of them must be minus, because remember, you get this term, you get this negative 15, okay, by multiplying whatever numbers are here and here together. So in order to get a negative number, it needs to be a positive times a negative. And then what the negative in front of the 2 is telling you is that the larger number is going to be negative. So what we want to do is we want to think of all the factors of 15, okay? Because again, we're looking for two numbers that, let me use a different color here, two numbers that multiply to negative 15 and add to negative 2, okay? So if we think about that, we could do, I always say just start with 1. So 1 and 15, remember the bigger number is the um, negative 1. So 1, so let's put negative 15 up here. So 1 times negative 15 is negative 15, and 1 plus negative 15, well, that's going to equal negative 14. And remember, we want negative 2, so that didn't work. Uh, 2, 15 is not divisible by 2, so the next number would be 3. And 3 times negative 5, again, we want the larger number to be negative. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. And then 3 plus negative 5 is negative 2. So we did it. This is great. This is what we want right here. So we know that it's going to be x plus 3 times x minus 5. Okay? So then, obviously, we know that x plus 3 um, is going to equal 0, um, so that no matter what this is, we end up with 0, or 
x minus 5 could equal 0, you know, so that no matter what this is, this will be 0, so the whole thing will be 0. So x plus 3 equals 0, and then just subtract 3 from both sides, and you end up with x equals uh, negative 3. That's 1. And then x minus 5 equals 0. So then you add 5 to both sides. So x equals 5. Perfect. So now what you're probably saying is, okay, so I've got x equals negative 3 and x equals 5. So I kind of want to go back and see what my sides are here. So let's come over here and see what we've got. So we know that, um, let's see here. We know that, I'm just going to move this around a little bit like this. Perfect. Okay, so we know that EF is x squared plus 8. We know that EG is x plus 5. And we know that FG is negative 3x plus 7. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to substitute in. Now, I know what you're probably saying. You're saying, well, I know that that's not the answer because it's negative and I can't have a negative x because I just can't. You know, it's got to be positive number. So, so x is going to equal 5, so I'm going to plug that in. All right, well, let's see. So let's say that x does equal 5, okay? So then EF is just going to be 5 squared um, plus 8, which is 25 plus 8, which is going to equal 33. Good. And then EG, we know, is x plus 5. So that's just going to be 5 plus 5 which is going to be 10. So far, so good. And then fg, we know, is negative 3x plus 7. Oops. So that's going to equal negative 3 times 5 plus 7, which is negative, what, 15 plus 7, which is negative 8. Uh-oh. Huh. One of our sides measures negative 8. So that's not possible. I can't have a negative side length. But if you think about it mathematically, the reason that that happens is, remember, the perimeter was 35. Well, 33 plus 10 is 43 minus 8 is going to equal 35. So if you add them all together, you do get 35. So mathematically it works, but, but in real life, you're not going to have a negative side length, negative 8. So that means that actually x equals 5 is not the answer we're looking for. So what I want to do is try when x equals 3, or sorry, when x equals negative 3. Okay, so let's plug that in. So let me see here. I'll just move this up slightly. Oops. Okay. So now we will try when x equals, and I'll even do it in a different color here, when x equals negative 3. Okay, so e f is going to just equal x squared plus 8, which in this case is going to equal negative 3 squared plus 8, which is 9 plus 8, which is 17. So far, so good. E g is, let's see, x plus 5. So when x equals negative 3, that should be negative 3 plus 5. So that's going to equal 2. Good. Everything's positive still. fg, that's going to be negative 3x plus 7. So that's going to equal negative 3 times negative 3 plus 7, which equals 9 plus 7 which is 16. Perfect! Look at that. I end up with side lengths of 17, 2, and 16. And if I add them all together, 17 plus 2 is 19. 19 plus 16 is going to equal 35 if I add them all together. Okay? So I'm good. All right? 
So those are actually going to be my side lengths. So I can go up here, okay, I can scroll up to the top here, scroll up to the top. So I knew that, scroll up a little more. So I knew that this side was 17, this side is 16, and this side is 2. Okay, so what I'm going to do in that case is then just list them because I, I can easily have the sides um, in order from least measure to greatest measure. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm just going to erase this right here because um, I can list this stuff there. Okay, so if I want to list my sides in order from least measure to greatest measure. I'll just write it down here, sides. Okay, so my shortest side is EG. And then next is um, FG, which is 16. And then the last side is going to be EF. which is 17. Perfect. And then I want to do the angles, so I'm going to lift this. Maybe I'll do the angles off to the side over here. I'll just do it in another color so we can see a little bit better. Okay, perfect. So then the angles, ooh, that's not a good color. Let's do it in, let's do it in blue. Okay, so obviously, the smallest angles across from the shortest side, so across from EG is F, so angle F. And then um, next shortest side is 16 right here, so FG, so this, the angle opposite FG is angle E. And then the longest side is EF, so the angle opposite side EF is going to be angle G. Then I will box that up right like this. So there we go. So my sides are EG, FG, and EF, and then my angles are F, E, and then G. And that is in order from least measure to greatest measure. So the, the key takeaway that I want you to remember from this problem is that we want to set it... Um, here we go. We want to make sure that we remember that if we're given the perimeter, we just we just add up all the sides and set it equal to the perimeter. But the key, the really big thing I want you to remember is just because you get a negative value of x does not mean that's that's not the x. That does not mean that um, you should rule that out as the value of x because what matters is when you actually plug it into the sides that all your sides are positive. So remember, the value of x can be negative, but the side cannot. Very good.